I don't get that burst of energy. I don't get that enrichment. The fascination of an unconscious content lies in its power to attract the conscious libido, the first symptom of which is a riveting of attention upon that content. If the attraction grows stronger, the libido is sucked away from consciousness, and this may express itself in a lowering of consciousness, fatigue, depression, etc. Whereas an illness, the activation of the unconscious content by an afflux of libido manifests itself in the form of disturbances, symptoms, and so forth. In the creative individual, this content spontaneously combines with consciousness and expresses itself in creativity. The act of conscious realization consists in the ego deliberately leading the mind and the free libido at its disposal towards the focus of fascination. The libido activating the unconscious system as its emotional component and the libido of the recognizing and realizing ego system flow together in the act of recognition into a single stream. This confluence is perceived by the ego as pleasurable. And this is so in any genuine realization, in any new recognition or discovery. And again, whenever a complex is broken down or an unconscious content assimilated. It's immaterial whether the fascinating content is consciously realized as an image, a dream, a fantasy, an idea, or a hunch, a projection. The assimilation of unconscious contents in whatever form leads not only to an enrichment of the conscious material, but to an enrichment of libido, which makes itself felt subjectively as excitement, vivacity, and a joy that sometimes borders on intoxication, and objectively as a heightening of interest, a broadened and intensified capacity for work, mental alertness, etc. Eric Newman, um, Origins and History of Consciousness. <sighs> In the morning I write, I write three pages it's called Morning Pages. Um, Julia Cameron, James Cameron's wife, recommends it in, in her book. And on the mornings that I do a little bit of shadow work, I'm consciously, as he says, flowing that consciousness towards the unconscious content. And by breaking it down and, and starting to assimilate it, um, I can start to feel that enrichment of libido, that energy and that drive that I can use creatively, the next thing I do in the morning is work on music or, or marketing maybe, but typically music. And on the mornings when I don't feel like doing shadow work, maybe I just avoid it for whatever reason, I don't get that burst of energy, I don't get that enrichment that is the prize of consciousness. So, it's something to consider. It's something to recommend if you have a hard time being creative. Um, I'm 43 right now. So when I was 18, 19, I was creative like crazy. As the years and decades go by, it can be more difficult to be creative and get in a creative headspace, especially when you're busy with all kinds of you know life concerns. So having methods like this that are not arbitrary. They're built into um, our humanity and our consciousness. And it's a double whammy because doing shadow work brings its own healing um, as well as energy. I mean, energy is kind of the cherry on top. That's kind of the bonus.